So if you're a solar company, a maintenance team, or just a pilot looking to get into drone solar inspections and know nothing about where to start, this video is for you. We're gonna be taking a brief yet informative overview of how drone solar inspections are conducted, types of data and how they're processed, benefits of using drones versus traditional methods, and more coming up. So this is a drone thermal camera. I'm sure you know most of you are already aware about thermography and what it is. You know, it's been a part of solar for a number of years now with technicians using handheld thermal imager devices, where basically they go through all the panels and just one by one look at them. So it really is actually the same camera and the same thing as one of these that's specifically made for a drone. But the, as you see from the video I'm going to put up right now, the drone can kind of just whiz by dozens of panels every couple of seconds. And so it is tremendously faster than using a handheld device. Just like when you are inspecting solar with IV curve tracing, uh, handheld thermal imagers, or even just a visual inspection, it needs to be done by trained technicians. So it is the same thing with hiring a drone pilot. Pilots need to be licensed. They have to understand operating procedures, uh, especially the laws and where you, and where you cannot fly. Uh, for example, I did a solar farm that was right next to an airport and there was a height limitation on how high the drone could fly. And so I had to request authorization to get that higher up so I could perform the inspection correctly. And since we're working with thermal cameras, it is a good idea to have an in-depth knowledge of how they work and how to use them. I personally have an SUAS thermography certification. And let me tell you, there's a ton of information that you will learn that is not available, available for free online. A ton of settings, uh, weather implications. You know, if you have like one setting incorrect, it could potentially ruin all the data and you have to do it again. And even uh, there's a lot of chemistry and thermography. You know, when I last took chemistry in high school, I did not think that I was going to see that stuff ever again. And I did. I remembered some of the terms and I actually told my chemistry teacher that I was learning it all again, well, which was kind of funny. So now let's get into what's actually going to happen during the inspection. So the pilot is going to use a program to put in all the different types of settings and plan the flight. And so the drone is actually not going to be flown manually. It's all autonomous. So they put in all these settings, drone takes off, and then it actually flies all the rows of panels by itself and takes hundreds or even thousands of photos, depending on how big the site is. There's a few other things the pilot will do for the inspection. One of them being is constantly checking for solar irradiance. So they will have a solar irradiance meter and it depends on who you ask, but it might be every 15, 20, or maybe even half an hour that they will uh, check the irradiance of the, of the panels and write them down in the logbook. Um, it's also a best practice to write down the different, different weather, if weather changes, if some clouds come in or if it, uh, some wind picks up because the wind especially can create a cooling effect over the panels and make it a little bit more difficult to uh, distinguish um, some a normal operating panel from you know one that had some anomalies on it so these types of things the pilot uh, will always keep in mind and be doing as well as you know operating the drone and i know you're thinking with these hundreds or even thousands of photos do i have to manually go through every single one and check for the issues thankfully the answer is no so there are software companies out there uh, that you can upload all the photos to and then they have artificial intelligence that will uh, look, th uh, look through all of them and diagnose the problems actually with 99% accuracy. There is a long list of anomaly types that the drone can detect. Some of them, you know, are more common like cell level, diode, module, and string outages. But there's a, some in there that are really unique, uh, including tracker malfunctions, uh, reverse polarity, and even underperforming strings where the string is still operating, but just not at its peak efficiency. A few of my favorite features from the software companies that analyze the drone data, one of them being the interactive map. So this is actually a satellite uh, image, or it could be a drone photo, uh, top down of the PV system. And you can actually zoom in and see all the different faults that were found and click on them. And it tells you exactly what it is and where it is. You could even send them the as-built site drawings and they could put in uh, the numbering scheme that, that the maintenance team uses, 
Uh, so that's a really awesome feature. The next one being the estimations of revenue loss and kilowatt hour loss if the problems are not fixed. They will take into consideration your local cost per kilowatt hour and they will also take a look at the model, specific model numbers um, and specs of the panels that are installed throughout the system to get the most um, accurate estimation. One of the best times to actually perform a drone inspection of a solar system is when it's being commissioned and turned on for the first time. Not only does it allow you to fix any problems that, that do immediately arise, but it also creates a baseline of data for the next few years of inspection so you know exactly what the system should be looking like. This is by far the biggest reason why so many people are now switching to using drones to inspect their solar systems is the efficiency and speed. It is estimated that doing an inspection of one megawatt of solar using IV curve tracing takes around two through five hours and using a drone to inspect one megawatt takes usually under 10 minutes. This right here is a case study done by Measure where they actually compared using drones versus manual inspections. Drones saw an increase of 97% efficiency and on average savings of over $1,200 per megawatt. And then looking at this chart here, uh, you can see the huge differences in, in man hours uh, between using drones and then having other technicians doing traditional methods. The next benefit is being able to inspect all of the panels in the system. There is an industry practice where only a small sample size of the modules are inspected at the really large sites maybe only 10 through 25%. And often it's only a visual or electrical inspection. So there's lots of problems that could be there, but there is not perceivable from the human eye. And we are seeing now more frequently at the larger sites, 100% of the modules are being inspected because of the time saving and efficiency of using the drone. The last benefit we're gonna talk about today is a reduction in costs. It's just cheaper these days to, to have one or two pilots inspect a large site in one day than having technicians go out and do it, which could take them over a week. A quick bonus too is during the drone inspection, the panels stay operating, so there's no plant downtime. Unlike something like IV curve tracing, where you have to unplug them and turn them off so they're not gonna be producing any revenue during that time. So that's all I got for today's video, but if you wanna see a live demonstration of me inspecting some solar panels, take a look at that video up there. As well as let me know in the comments if you learned anything new today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.